Hi again, this is Al, K0CN, and today I thought I'd put together a short video and take a short look at the Force 12 FPA20 off-center fed vertical dipole. This is Force 12's flagpole antenna. However, I just purchased the antenna without the flagpole accessories. I went with an off-center fed vertical dipole because I wasn't interested in laying out a second radial field for a vertical antenna. My intent was to find a general purpose antenna that I could use this winter for bands 20 meters and higher. So after reviewing the antennas that were available, I liked the specs and the reports that I'd heard about the Force 12. I sent in my order and soon learned that one of the parts was on back order. So it turns out I had to wait about seven weeks for delivery. I was getting pretty nervous because it was already late November and I knew winter was around the corner. So I set up the antenna the day it arrived and sure enough, winter came on the next day. The antenna arrived at my house via UPS ground. It was well packed and I liked it that each component inside the box was wrapped in plastic so there was no marring or scratching of the aluminum parts. Here you can see the PVC tube that we bury in the ground and the antenna simply slips into that tube for easy mounting. The aluminum base tube is isolated from the antenna with a polymer insulator. The antenna is fed with a coax pigtail which feeds through the base insulator up through the bottom section of the dipole. The center insulator of the dipole has two leads that extend from the polymer insulator and are attached to the dipole by bolts that are already installed. Assembly of the antenna was straightforward and consisted of simply bolting sections of aluminum tubing together using the included nuts and bolts and the pre-drilled holes. All of the sections were numbered so there was little question as to how the pieces fit together. I had no problems fitting the pieces together or getting the bolts to fit in the holes. I felt the construction of the antenna was quite good. Once the antenna was assembled, my next job was to dig a hole for the base. The plans call for burying a three foot long PVC tube and simply backfilling with soil and tamping it down. So I got out my trusty post hole digger and made a three foot hole. When I was finished, I layered the bottom with about two inches of river stone to help drain the water should any get in the tubing. Then I placed the PVC tube into the hole and carefully backfilled, checking for plumb as I went along. When I was finished, I simply lifted the assembled antenna and slipped it into the PVC tube in its vertical position. Since putting up the antenna, we've had several good windstorms and have had no problems with this base supporting the antenna. Once I had the antenna erected, my next step was to install a piece of shrink wrap tubing over the center insulator of the vertical dipole. This is a piece of heavy duty shrink wrap and requires the use of a commercial quality heat gun. The inside of the shrink wrap tubing contains a hot melt adhesive which helps to seal the feed point of the vertical antenna. Here you can see the shrink wrap after I finished with some of the adhesive protruding from the bottom. Well that finishes the installation of the antenna with the exception of connecting the feed point to the ballon. For my installation I chose to use a 1 to 1 current ballon which I purchased through Force 12. Finishing the installation simply required connecting the coax to the antenna through the ballon. I found that the antenna tuned the best when used with a 100 foot run of coax. In my case where I'm not using a tuner at the antenna, I'm probably experiencing signal loss in the line due to the high SWR. So that's an option you might want to consider in your plans. But I am happy that I got the antenna up when I did. As I said the day after I installed the antenna, winter arrived here in Minnesota and this was the scene in my backyard. Well, that concludes the installation of the Force 12 flagpole antenna, FPA 20, off-center fed vertical dipole. And I'll say that after a couple of weeks of use, I'm pleased with the antenna and the way it performs. My goal was to put up an antenna that gave me reasonable performance on 20 meters and above. And this antenna does exactly that. And with that, I'll conclude this video and wish you all good luck and good DX. From Al73s, this is K0CN. Thanks for watching.